All right, so I want to do a quick video to talk about what our plans are for the 63 now that we have it back in the garage, back, back from the body shop. So firstly, what I've been doing is cleaning everything up just because everything's really dirty from the body shop. I vacuumed out the inside. I still have to wash the inside off with a damp rag to get all the marks out from wet sanding the car. I removed the plastic from the engine that was on it from the engine builder. This is the original 327, 300 horse, backed up with the original Muncie 4 speed. I still have to go back and detail some stuff like the oil fill tube and the oil filter can should be black. I have to go back and take those off and re silk screen the can. And obviously, there's a lot more stuff that needs done under there. I removed the plastic off the frame, it still needs to be cleaned. Put all that stuff on to prevent it from being really dirty when the car is being worked on. This is what I have planned so far, so since the car is completely gutted as you can see, it's really easy to pick a point and start working. So I'm going to start off with some of the firewall insulations, the upper and the lower. I have to take this off because the lower in insulation goes there and from the tunnel insulation being put on the body we didn't uh, push it close enough to the body so it interferes with the shifter linkage so I have to play with that I'll put the boot on I'm going to double check all the body mounts make sure they're tight and after that put a couple emblems on so the exhaust balance is going to have to come back off so we can put the taillights in tighten the emblem down and after that, it's just pick an area and start working on it. Eventually we'll get there. On Corvettes, there's a little piece of fiberglass insulation wrapped in foil that goes on the underside of this part of the tunnel to keep some of the heat out from this area, since this is where your legs and stuff are. So I just reached in and pulled it back with my hand. Now we have all four gears. Don't you just love old cars? So now you got a quick walk around of the 63. I wanted to show you our process for how we figure out what we're going to do with the 63, the order we do some stuff in, and a general idea of the finish on parts. So I have a few of our reference manuals here. We have a couple more, but this is just some of the big stuff. Um, so number one, we have the assembly manual, which is a copy of the original hand-drawn details for the 63 so you can see there's the headlight install so all these were hand drawn which is pretty crazy to think that somebody sat here and drafted all of these drawings just for the guys to assemble the cars so this is really crucial because you can get all of your torque specs um, some of them are more obvious but it really helps in the chassis section and you can see here's the where they tested with water to make sure that the doors and the windows didn't leak. There's some optional extras in the back. This is always a good reference. It's a good place to start to figure out how something went together. Um, this misses some details because some stuff came pre-assembled, so that's where the Chevy service manual comes in handy. So this is always a great resource to figure out how to fine-tune things, how to replace different components, how to service things. It gives nice breakdowns and it gives you special tools that may be required for the jobs. So this is always a good reference to have in the shop. Another good reference is the NCRS judging manual, which you don't have to be building an NCRS car to take advantage of the judging manual, just because it tells you um, what types of bolts you're looking for. If you have a bend, you don't know what bolt you need. Um, that's always a good reference. Um, it tells you about, obviously, types of colors you need to look for for parts. It tells you minute differences in parts like a 63 and a 64 Corvette air cleaner look very similar. Um, the only main difference is the fact that there's no breather tube in the back in a 63 one. There's a very small one in the front and in a 64 and 5 they have a large um, tube in the back. But it gives you general finishes, stuff to look for. And this is um, important for a 63 also because there were very strange um, happenings with the 63. So one of them is like the hood wedges. Um, they had problems with the hoods 
aligning the whole way with the mid-year uh, program, but especially in 63. So they used uh, alignment blocks at different stages. So you can see they used them. Early on they used none. Uh, later they used two, two sets and they used four sets and they used some on the back. They used some on coupes, some on convertibles. It was mixed all over the place. Ours didn't have any hood wedges. Um, so that just made it easy for us. But it, it's a very good reference um, when you're building the car. And another reference I found online um, from NCRS uh, assembly, they have chapter meetings and they brought in some documents for one of their assemblies. So since the 63 is so far torn apart, it's basically like how it would have rolled through on the assembly line. Now, obviously it's a little out of order since the body is on the frame already. They would have assembled some of this before the car was actually put on the frame. But um, besides that, this is a really good document because it tells you the entire assembly process from beginning to end for a mid-year Corvette. So it tells you at the very beginning, here you can see that it gives you the ingredients, how they baked the car after they painted it. And you can see it, there's the hard, hard trim. It gives you the order they put all the components in, which some of the stuff may not be as important um, if your car is not fully torn apart. But since our car is torn apart so far, um, it makes sense to have a document like this. Um, for example, it helps with um, body drop where it tells you that they installed a special tool to actually pull the exhaust together to pull the mufflers together I don't know how well you can see but the top of the muffler actually kisses the quarter panel whenever you put the body down so you have to tighten them up to keep them nice and tight and a couple other good sections in here are like for the interior you won't be able to find it at this very second but it gives you um, the specific details of how they put the dash in what or um, when they put like the defrost vent on it and how they put the dash in. It gives you specific details like that that you may not know because uh, most of you won't have a dash out of your car or stuff like that. And um, it just is nice to have a little more insight into the whole process and it makes you appreciate um, the final product that came out in the end. So that way you don't have to take things apart and put them back together because you put them in the wrong order, which can happen very easily if you don't um, have a document like this in front of you. So together with that, and then, for example, I like to use the Paragon or any other uh, Corvette catalog for quick service um, instructions, because they do use schematics that are in uh, the original assembly manual. But for simple references like uh, how I installed the insulation, it just gives you a quick picture so you can figure out which way the parts lay out. Um, it's a great way to see what kind of bolts you need um, if they're available. Nice color coded format. So that's always a good tip just to have as many books out in front of you as you can. And so from here on out I'm going to stick as closely as possible with uh, this printout here which is over 20, 27 pages long. So I'll stick with that um, just to kind of get a rough idea of what I want to work on on the car next um, just to make sure I stay along a similar progression to what they did in the factory just to keep everything along those lines and so we don't get too far ahead of ourselves and back yourself up into a corner. But there's not too many parts to these cars so uh, it'll go pretty quick. So that's going to do it for this upload guys. I hope you enjoyed. There's going to be a lot more to come once I catch up on all my YouTube videos. So be sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel if you want to see more on the car, and I'll catch you guys later.